The national championship game was a letdown based on that tragic score, but the trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania has dropped and that was not a disappointment. We get our best look into the film's plot and setting. Kang the Conqueror makes his presence felt and seen in person for the first time. This variant of He Who Remains is no honest dealer and negotiator. He uses and manipulates to his will and his tasks. He also seems to be a manipulator of time and is able to change all of existence and reality. The film will be the first MCU project of Phase 5 and will tie directly into the Avengers Kang Dynasty. That film is set for a 2025 release date, so it'll be interesting to see how this film sets up a movie that's coming out years later. If Kang will be a big threat to a large group of Avengers, how will Scott Lang fare in his third film? We open the trailer with an overhead b-roll shot of San Francisco. Scott Lang, played by Paul Rudd, walks down the street in a similar sequence from the first trailer. We get a voiceover from Kang the Conqueror, played by Jonathan Majors in the background. Kang is naming Scott's accomplishments before leaving some doubt in his head. Kang is a very calculating character and he will try to tempt Scott at first for his own goal. Kang tells Scott that he's lost time like himself and attempts to form an alliance through this bond. We also see the same sequence where Scott Lang and company get pulled into the quantum realm in this trailer as well. Then of course we get a big reveal of Kang the Conqueror and his mask and his reveal of his actual face. Kang also appears to be able to change his eye colors from blue to dark brown when Scott looks concerned and most likely intimidated at the sight of Kang. Kang tells him that he's the one man that will give him the one thing that he wants, and that is time. Next, the trailer gives us our best view of Coropolis, the city where Kang the Conqueror calls home. Above is an orange portal hovering over the motioning city and Kang approaches a platform. Janet Van Dyne, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, gives a voiceover and mentions how Kang can rewrite existence. A shot of Coropolis is shown and large rings start to rise over it. Janet says that Kang is also able to shatter a timeline. You can tell that she's actually seen this violent act of Kang and his wrath before. We get a cool shot of Ant-Man splitting into two forms and looking shocked at each other. Next, we cut to a shot of Janet telling Scott and Hope not to trust Kang. And it seems like Scott doesn't really take this to heart initially because he's obviously having his own ambition and goal into having more time with his daughter. Scott is seen walking up to another platform in front of Kang and he is joined along by Cassie and two of other of Kang's forces. Behind all of them is Modok, this time without the gold mask. It's very brief, but I think we can tell that it's Corey Stoll returning as the character in the form of an enlarged head, obviously. They oversee a section of the quantum realm that looks to be damaged. Scott tells his family that he doesn't care who this man is. He's just lost so much time with his family, time with his daughter, and this all ties into flashbacks with his daughter at her younger age and him embracing her. It just makes the whole situation very sad. It's not Cassie's fault, it's not Scott's fault, it's just a circumstance of situation. Scott believes that this could be their second chance. Ant-Man might be trying to help Kang initially and jumps into the damage section of the realm. He approaches a similar orange portal that we saw earlier hovering over the city of Chronopolis. He shrinks the closer he gets to it and it looks like Hope, Janet, and Hank have different ideas of how to escape because they're out in the wilderness. Kang's voice is overheard once again and he sounds anger and frustrated this time. Kang tells Scott to bring everything that he needs or else everything that Scott calls in life will end. This is another reference to the line earlier that we heard from Janet Van Dyne, referencing to how Kang can change existence. Scott embraces Hope in the next shot and looks absolutely concerned. We get an interesting combo of phrases in the trailer, quote unquote witness the beginning and quote unquote of a new dynasty. Witness the beginning of a new dynasty, this is obviously leading to one thing and one thing only, that is the Kang dynasty and the first official Avengers film of the multiverse saga. Kang is observing that orange portal as his forces assemble for either a launch or a departure. Could Kang be using Scott as a way of escaping the quantum realm with his army? We get another shot where Cassie says the whole situation is her fault. Scott's running away and splitting into more Ant-Mans and this whole sequence obviously looks very similar to the one that we saw Reed Richardson in the Multiverse of Madness. But it's just absolute chaos with Kang and really showcase how serious he is about his request. He either tells Scott and Cassie they might not want to see what's about to happen. Cassie looks real concerned and she is pulled away from helping her father. Scott, now angered, yells at Kang about their previous deal. Kang shows no remorse and blasts him with his blue energy. The two start to battle and Cassie is seen in her new purple suit delivering a big explosion on the platform. A whole action sequence occurs and we get Modok with his golden mask start to attack somebody. The battle seems to be well matched and will lead to a punching battle between Scott and Kang the Conqueror. Eventually Kang stands over Scott and laughs at the idea of losing the Ant-Man. Despite having a damaged helmet, Scott Lang gets up and tells Kang that he doesn't have to win but rather ensure that both both Kang loses, even if that includes himself. We cut to Scott falling over the ring structure while a column of Ant-Man underneath start crumbling as well, while his daughter calls out to him. We hear a voiceover from him saying that, he, that he's sorry to his daughter. 
The final shot is Kang getting off the platform, jumping down to the floor, and blasting his energy towards either probably Scott or somebody else, and looking absolutely angered. His helmet is fully activated, his blue screen is completely on. We get the reveal of February 17th as the release date, and it was a wild finish to the trailer. Before I give my final thoughts, I'd like for you to give this video a thumbs up and hit that like button. Drop a sub and help me get that subscribers number going up. Kang was showing his immense power. His music motif was sneakily tucked into the trailer's music as well. The MCU is making a big effort showing Kang's power. If this is the beginning rather than the end of Kang and the MCU, you can only expect for him to come out with some sort of victory in some form or fashion. Seeing MODOK making his debut in some quick shots was a bit surprising because I thought we might see a little bit more. Cassie Lang is dealing with her own guilt, dragging her family into the quantum realm and into the whole situation with Kang. If Kang is willing to use a man's own daughter as leverage and as a threat, imagine how cruel his future variants might be. Not the friendly guy that we saw earlier in the trailer. He makes it simple and demands something from Scott. We might not get a full answer into what specifically he wants Scott to retrieve for him until the movie comes out, but we get a return of those golden green structures hovering over from the city that we also saw in the first trailer. A closer shot reveals more of the clips similar to the ones that we've seen in the Eternal Ship, Chong Chi's Ten Rings, Kamala's Bands, and possibly other things that we've seen in Phase 4. All again tying things into Phase 5 and of course getting the Conqueror and the King Dynasty. The visual effects are not too bad and the film is doing some quick reshoots just in case. It's slightly concerning with weeks till release but I have high hopes for the film to deliver with such a good premise and a villain. This trailer only added to my own excitement but share your thoughts on the trailer in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you stuck around long enough to drop a like. If you did subscribe, tell me in the comments below. And share your thoughts on topics like this one and others by clicking on the right side of your screen. I appreciate your support and this has been Joel from Real Talk Movies. See you soon.